Saying democracy is in jeopardy in America is like saying beaches are in jeopardy in Wyoming. Notes from the Edge of the Narrative Matrix. Liberals will often say you are privileged if you don't care who wins the U.S. election. Actually, you're privileged if you do care. You think people in Gaza give a fuck whether Biden or Trump is genociding them? You think the U.S. empire will be any less murderous and tyrannical with a D or an R over it? Saying democracy is in jeopardy in America is like saying beachfront properties are in jeopardy in Wyoming. Your country is run by a few billionaires and government agencies. You don't get a real vote, and even if you did, you're all propagandized anyway. It's not a real thing. It's actually pretty obnoxious to live in the imperial core and yet spend most of your political energy fixating on a presidential race whose outcome will have no effect on the murderousness and tyranny of the imperial war machine abroad. Focus on opposing the empire itself. Foreign policy gets treated as just one of many issues in the politics of the imperial core, but it's actually almost all of the issues. The overwhelming majority of the empire's abusiveness happens outside the borders of the U.S. and its pale-complexioned allies. Israel has approved the largest seizure of land in the occupied West Bank in over three decades, according to the activist group Peace Now. One of the leaders of Israel's settlement movement, Daniela Weiss, explained the push to expand West Bank settlements in remarkably frank language during an interview with The New Yorker back in November. Here's a quote. In Israel, there's a lot of support for settlements, and this is why there have been right-wing governments for so many years. The world, especially the United States, thinks there is an option for a Palestinian state, and if we continue to build communities, then we block the option for a Palestinian state. We want to close the option for a Palestinian state, and the world wants to leave the option open. It's a very simple thing to understand, end quote. Now that one paragraph right there will teach you more about the present-day realities of Israel and Palestine than an entire year of watching CNN. It's horrid, and it's jarring to hear it spoken out loud in a favorable way. But it's true. The two-state solution that mainstream Western liberals keep babbling about is a complete lie. There is no two-state solution as long as the entity known as Israel continues to exist in the way that it exists. Until there is a complete overhaul of everything the Zionist entity is and always has been, saying you support a Palestinian state is no more a solution than saying Palestinians can grow wings and fly away to Narnia. The main arguments for supporting Democrats these days all revolve around pretending really, really hard that the capitalist warmongering, ecocidal tyranny of mainstream liberalism is significantly different from the capitalist warmongering, ecocidal tyranny of Trumpism. To be a Democrat in 2024 is to spend half your time praying November gets here before Israel starts a full-scale war with Lebanon, and the other half praying November gets here before your president's brains start visibly leaking out his ears. The central political argument of the mainstream so-called moderate is that we can solve our problems by working collaboratively with the giant corporations, banks, and imperialist interests who are causing all our problems. Think about the manic, frenzied way that Western politicians, pundits, and celebrities focused on unconfirmed reports of rapes on October 7th and their complete lack of interest in all the reports that have been coming out about Israel using rape as an instrument of torture. Why the discrepancy? Is it just political bias, or is it something uglier as well? Do Israel apologists perhaps focus on one set of rape allegations with such freakish intensity because they know that it resonates with generations of superstitious paranoia in white societies about dark-skinned men wanting to rape white women? That it appeals to deeply racist and xenophobic notions that dark-skinned foreigners are going to come to your cities and begin raping your women if they are not controlled or exterminated? 
the gibbering, shrieking hysteria that Israel apologists have demonstrated toward one set of allegations, while ignoring much more well-evidenced ones perpetrated by Israel, suggests there's a lot more going on there besides one narrative being more favorable to one side than another. It points to something deeply unwholesome lurking just below the surface in our society. And the fact that it's being knowingly inflamed and exploited by Israel's supporters shows how deeply depraved these people are.